gymnasium here at John A. Logan College on a Saturday afternoon. It's Dave McKenzie with you. Hope you're doing well and hope you've had a pleasant start to your Saturday as we are getting you set for John A. Logan women's basketball here on 103.5 ESPN.com. I'll be flying by myself today. Mr. Tim Ritchie is on assignment, whatever Tim Ritchie does on assignment. I don't, I'm not exactly what that shirt, what that is, but uh, we're getting you set as the number 14 team in the country in Division One in JCAA basketball is here at John A. Logan College, the Wabash Valley Warriors. They are bringing their 19-1 record, their 19-game winning streak here to John A. Logan College to take on the Lady Balls, who are 6-11 on the season. They are 2-5 overall. The Balls are coming off a loss on Wednesday nights on the road at uh, Southwest Illinois College, 72 62 in that game. It was um, leading scorer Shamira Brown with 17 points for the Vols. Maddie Calvin chipped in 13. You had Cheyenne Trotter with 11. Uh, Indy Robinson finished with six. Olivia Hartman with five. Jelaine Wolford Bird with three in the game. And that was the scoring of the 62 points for the Lady Vols tonight uh, here, here this afternoon. The Vols are going to be without so Talay Wolford Bird, who is out due to illness. The Warriors from Wabash Valley and Coach Luke uh, Scheinecker come into this game. As we said, they are 19 and one on the season. They're on a 19-game winning streak. They lost their opening game of the season, and uh, they are just on a roll. They have great speed. They have great size. They will press, they will run, they can all shoot the ball. And uh, this is a team that we saw um, twice last year. And this team, and we thought they were good last year, um, uh, they are even better this year and a, and a lot of fun to watch. The number 14 team in the latest polls from NJCAA. Both teams are out on the floor as they're going through uh, their pregame warm-ups. And it's uh, going to be two games taking place here at John A. Logan College this afternoon. Of course, this is the first game, and coming up at 3 o'clock, Mike Murphy will have the uh, men's game, the number six team in the country as they take on the Wabash Valley Warriors men's team. That's a 3 o'clock tip-off. Should be about 2.45 on the pregame show, and you'll hear that over on 103.5 ESPN. It's a full day of sports all around Southern Illinois. Um, and, of course, NFL football action is going to be kicking off here coming up at about 3 o'clock. So there's all sports, it's all, all sorts of sports that you can keep track of as you're going through your afternoon. But we appreciate you tuning in and watching these Lady Balls here today as they get ready to take on the Wabash Valley Warriors. We're going to continue on our pregame show. And when we come back, you're going to hear from the head coach of the Lady Balls. That's Amanda Shelby. She's coming up next here on 103.5. ESPN.com. I'm the center director for Malone's Early Learning Center. You got to have that love and passion and being able to come here and see how rewarding it is to have a child learn how to tie their shoes or have a child learn how to stack blocks. It's, it's so rewarding. When I was at John A. Logan, it really gave me the mentality of we're coming in to teach the children, not to watch the children. And so it taught me the importance of engaging with them, becoming one with the classroom and really having that involvement there. Talking to Coach Amanda Shelby before today's uh, home game against Wabash Valley. Uh, you took the loss at Belleville earlier this week, uh, but what did the team learn from the loss? Was was there a lesson to be learned in that loss, Coach? Um, I mean, and just another lesson that you have to play for four quarters. You can't take a quarter off. And, you know, we did a lot better in each quarter, but there were times where we did take plays off. We turned the ball over, made silly mistakes. And, you know, on the road and even at home, you can't make that against good teams. You had Tylee back for the first time in a few games. Uh, she was dealing with a knee injury. Uh, your thoughts on her return to the lineup? 
I mean, it was good to have her back in the lineup because she can do a lot of good things. I mean, just now conditioning is something that we have to get her back into mm -hmm. shape because she was out for a week and that does, you know, your conditioning goes away very quickly. So that's just something that she's going to have to work on that we have to help her work on. And, you know, it, it's, it'll be nice to have her back. Cheyenne had a pretty good game uh, at Swick, uh, 11 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 steals. He even made a free throw, which was great to see. Uh, how big was it to have her back at full capacity and in the starting lineup? It's, it's good because she does a lot of great things on both ends of the court. Um, she just has a lot of energy. She, you know, picks us up whenever we're getting down. And it, it's nice to have her because she can get in there and get the rebound. She can, you know, guard anybody from the one through the five. So, you know, she's very versatile in that aspect. So it's good to have her back. We've talked off mic before about this Wabash team you're about to face, and you know they're always so good offensively, but this year they're very good defensively as well, which makes them just an even bigger threat um, and doesn't really give the opposing team, no matter who it is, really any room for error. No, they're very good. They, Like you said, you know they've been good in the past, but this is probably the first team in a while that he's had it on both ends, and that makes them very, very tough to beat. And um, yeah, we're just going to really have to be smart with the ball. We have to be very – we have to take care of the ball. And against their press, um, we can't turn it over. I think last game, I think, time we turned over about 40 times. So we definitely have to cut that in half, if not more. Um, so it, it's going to be a big test for us. But, you know, like any, anybody can beat anybody on any given night. So, you know, if we come out ready to play, take care of the ball, make shots, who knows? Yeah. How do, you, how do you beat their press? Because every time that you would try to do what you normally would to try to beat a press, they would have an answer for it. So then you would go somewhere else and they would have an answer for that. So, so how do you beat a press that seems to have an answer for everything when you try to get a court? Um, a lot of it's confidence. We get, you know, we got rattled really quickly, um, and it's just passing the ball. You and it's got to be quick passes. It's got to be hard, crisp passes. You and the def or you have to stay away from the defense. You've got to have a middle person who wants the ball. And you know, we we do that. We'll be fine. We just got rattled very quickly right off the get go, and we never could recover from that. Have they had a weak point exposed that you can attack? I know you're limited, so it would be tough to attack them to begin with, but is there anything that has maybe shown a little bit of weakness for them? Not really. I mean, they are a very good team from top to bottom. Um, so it, it's going to be a tough matchup, but, hey, you know, we'll go out there and give it our best shot and see what happens. And then this will be your last home game until uh, late February, I believe. And so this is going to be a uphill climb for you guys, but it really can't be overstated that this is a must win for you guys because you won't be back home for a couple weeks. Yes, yeah, this, this schedule has been definitely crazy. Yeah. Um, I forgot about yeah, we won't be home for a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is start of this round two. Um, you know, anything can happen. I mean, you know, Wabash is probably on top of everybody, and everybody else is all fighting for you for mm -hmm. the same spot, basically. Um, so you know, maybe we'll get a you know going on the road a little bit, mm -hmm. and you know, we'll just we'll see what happens. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Welcome to Mackey's. How can I help you? Hey, welcome to Mackey's Pizza. Uh, every Monday night we have half price cheese, bre uh, cheese breadsticks. Uh, Monday through Friday we have a great lunch special. We can get eight inch pizza, a, a small salad, and a drink for $7.49. So come out and see us and uh, enjoy everything at Mackey's. John A is the only auto collision program in Southern Illinois. Uh, there's nobody else that offers it. We draw students from all over because there's just nobody else that offers the programs. The student-teacher relationship is one of the most important parts of this job. You can't really go wrong here. Anything you want to learn, you can learn it here. Whenever I started the program, I didn't feel too 110% about it. Like, I wasn't sure how I was going to do, but that's what makes me confident. It's the teacher and the students that I'm surrounded by. Hi guys, TJ Cowan from Cold-Blooded. Coming to you, wanted to introduce the Cold-Blooded Single Barrel Smokehouse. Here at Johnny Logan College, you guys are used to our coffee, now come check out our food. Not your average college, not your average food. Welcome to Matt. 
How can I help you? Hey, welcome to Mackey's Pizza. Uh, every Monday night we have half price cheese, bre uh, cheese breadsticks. Uh, Monday through Friday we have a great lunch special. We can get eight inch pizza, a, a small salad, and a drink for $7.49. So come out and see us and uh, enjoy everything at Mackey's. Afternoon, getting you set for John A. Logan women's basketball. Uh, 103.5 ESPN.com and both teams making their way out of the locker room right now as we are getting you set for the tip off just a couple of minutes away. These two teams, you heard Amanda Shelby talk about uh, the last matchup uh, that took place back the last game before the Thanksgiving break for the girls as they were up at Wabash Valley and uh, got beat 94 to 59. That was the last time these two teams met the Lady Vols coming off the loss on Wednesday night, as we mentioned earlier, at Swick, 72-62. Uh, it was a really good ball game. Um, and for the Lady Vols, you know, they were uh, down six at the, at the end of the first quarter. They were down three at halftime. And then in the third quarter, um, Swick started to pull away 58-46. And then the final score, a 10-point win for the Blue Storm. 72 to 62. Vols are shorthanded, have been here the last uh, four or five weeks or so. And um, on Wednesday night, they had eight players that were available for Coach Amanda Shelby tonight. They're down to just seven. As uh, we found out uh, today, the Ty Wolford Bird is out uh, due to illness. She won't be available. So just seven for the Lady Vols here this afternoon as they get ready to take on this number 14 team in the country. Coach Luke Scheidecker and his uh, Lady Warriors, they are on a roll. As a matter of fact, a 19-game roll, and they haven't lost since the very first game of the season, and they are just an outstanding ball team, playing great basketball. Um, and just uh, can do it all. They have great size. They have great speed. Um, they love to press and uh, and force the the action, get into that transition game and get running as they are all quick and, and athletic. And it should be a lot, uh, should be a tough matchup here this afternoon for the Lady Balls. It's hard to do when you have a full lineup and when you're playing shorthanded. Uh, it might be um, a little bit tougher here this afternoon, but you have to play the games and and uh, that's why um, they do play the games. You never know what could happen. Um, as Amanda Shelby and Coach Matt Crane have their Lady Vols out on the floor ready to go. Small crowd here so far, but it should be a big crowd as the afternoon progresses. Should start seeing people file in here to uh, Brewer Gymnasium. The men are going to be in action coming up this afternoon at 3 o'clock uh, for the tip-off as they take on Wabash Valley. Of course, Johnny Logan coming off that win uh, on Wednesday night over Jay Harrington and the Blue Storm. That was a 99-65 final uh, from up at Swick on Wednesday night. But we've got the girls game here for you as the Lady Vols are ready to go. They make their way over to the near sideline for player introductions. And we are going to have the entire game for you here um, online here on 103.5 ESPN.com. Coach Luke Scheinecker and Lady Warriors are going to start tonight. Number three, Isha Williams. She's the 5'8 sophomore from Elkhart, Indiana. Also, we're going to go with uh, Brooklyn Gray, number 14. She's a 5'11 freshman from Rockford, Illinois. And Madison Rochelle, number 21, she stands 5'9". She's a sophomore. She is out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Shalana Wagner, the 5'10 sophomore from Detroit, wears number 22. And then in the paint, it'll be Shantice Craig out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. She stands 6'2". She's a sophomore, wears number 52. Coach Amanda Shelby is going to go with the starters. Maddie Calvin, number four, the 5'8 sophomore out of Boward County, Kentucky. Boward, Kentucky. Also, Shamira Brown from Forest City, Arkansas. Where's number 12? She stands 5'6 and is a sophomore. Cheyenne Trotter from Springfield, Illinois. 
wears number 14. She's out of Springfield, Illinois, as we mentioned. And then Olivia Hartman from New Madrid, Missouri, the 5'7 sophomore, wears number 21. And getting to start, Riley Johnson uh, here this afternoon, the five, excuse me, the 6'1 freshman out of O'Fallon. It was Trotter that had uh, double digits along with Shamira Brown 17 on Wednesday night and Maddie Calvin's 13. Those were the three players for Amanda Shelby that were in double digits on the road at Swick on Wednesday night. Going to need all those points and some more here this afternoon as Wabash Valley comes in averaging 101 points per game. They shoot 50, excuse me, 48% from field on field goals, 27% from three. And as a team, they shoot almost 70% from the free throw line. They average 45 rebounds a game and 19, almost 20 assists per game. On the other side, the Lady Balls average 68 points per game. They shoot 40%, almost 41% from the field, 29% from three. From the strike, they're a 62% shooting team. They average 38 rebounds and 10 assists per game. As the starting lineups now are being announced for the Lady Balls, Riley Johnson makes her way out onto the floor. Riley, number 25, after the announcement of Cheyenne Trotter, here comes Maddie Calvin to the floor, gets the hand, hand slap. Then it'll be Shamira Brown makes her way to the floor. And finally, it'll be Olivia Hartman that makes her way to the floor. Kick back and relax, and uh, hope you enjoy the broadcast here this afternoon on 103.5 ESPN.com. As both teams get the last word from their coaches and are making their way out to the center jump circle. Our thanks to the LeVon Production Group for the online stream. It's available here this afternoon. The officials are ready. The teams are ready. And we are ready as well. Here we go. Ball is in the air and tips controlled by the Lady Balls. Of course, in their home whites here this afternoon as they are moving right to left on your radio dial. Shamira, Shamira Brown drives in, kicks it to Trotter, and now Riley Johnson, her pass is picked off. Here come the, the Lady Warriors the other way, and missing the shot. The first shot was Isha Williams, and ball goes out of bounds. It's gonna stay with the Warriors to our right. Triggering from the baseline, they throw it up top to Shalana Wagner down low and in the paint off the glass and good is Brooklyn Gray. Full court pressure just you as you expect from Wabash Valley. They want to press you the entire game. Balls need to get it across the timeline. They throw an outlet pass. There's Schmeyer Brown feeds Riley Johnson. The ball's tipped away. Two possessions, two turnovers the other way. With the basketball, taking it into the hole, throwing it at the rim, no good from uh, Brent Gray. And it's Riley Johnson that gets the rebound for the Vols. Taking it the other way. Shamira Brown kicks it to the corner. Olivia Hartman now top of the key. Maddie Calvin's three buried from the top of the key from Maddie Calvin. 3-2, Vols lead it here early. Wabash Valley with the basketball. Shalana Wagner to the right corner to Williams back and they work around to the left corner now. Tried to feed it down low. That's the first turnover on the Warriors. Here comes Hartman. Across the top of the key in the timeline. Needs some help. Gets it from Shemire Brown. Shemire works to the right side of the circle. Man to man D by the Warriors. Jumper from Brown is off the back of the iron. No good. Rebound controlled by Shanties Craig for the Warriors. Bringing it the other way. The length of the floor off the glass and good for the Warriors is Shalana Wagner. Four to three is our score here early. Balls with the basketball. They trail it by one, four to three. Bounce pass almost picked off, but the ball goes off of the Warriors' Shalana Wagner. And it's gonna stay with the Lady Balls here 
right in front of the scores bench to our left. Inbound pass to Maddie Calvin. Bounce packs down to Hartman. And now Riley Johnson dribbles, pulls up the dribble, gets it to Hartman, who's down in the corner left. Looks inside, throws it down to Johnson. Pass, and the ball's controlled by Trotter. And, oh, she misses the bunny. And the Warriors get the rebound. Into the front court, Wagner dribbles to the left wing. Dribbles across the top of the free throw line, and now she dishes it to Brooklyn Gray. To the right corner, back to Gray, now back to Wagner, around to the left corner. That's Williams. Her shot off the side of the backboard comes right back to her. She puts it up and in for Isha Williams. So 6-3 to three the score. 7-21 remaining here in the first quarter. Hartman having some trouble as she's got a double team on her. Finds Maddie Calvin. She breaks and turns toward midcourt. Now finds Riley Johnson who feeds down low to Trotter. Her layup is good the other way. Nice little play there. Cheyenne Trotter converts the layup on the nice feed from Riley Johnson. And it's 6-5. Wabash Valley with a one-point lead and the ball. Coming across the timeline is Shalana Wagner. Down to the corner right. Wagner gets it back. They find a backdoor cut to the low block. It's cut off nicely by Johnson. Wagner drives, has her shot blocked, gets her own the ball back. Dishes to the right wing to Williams, and now a three from just off the corner left or the left of the circle. Brooklyn Gray, she's got five in the game. And now it's nine to five. Balls turn it over. Couldn't get it into the front court. Here they come the other way. Wagner dribbles to the low block. Stutter step and travels and gives the ball right back to the Lady Balls. Luke Scheinecker says, hey, come on now. Length of the floor for Amanda Shelby's Volunteers. Round to Calvin, now to Hartman. They're in the backcourt trying to get across the timeline. Maddie Calvin's backed up. Now they get it to Hartman. Her pass is tipped. Ten-second call. Is a turnover on the Vols. That's going to be the fourth now. And it's going to give it right back to Wabash Valley. Nine to five the score. As we have a stoppage right now, I'm trying to, didn't see exactly what happened. Inbound pass, we're underway. Comes to Shalana Wagner. Wagner feeds down low. Shot blocked from Riley Johnson from Craig. And a whistle and a foul. The bucket's going to count as Gentise Craig got her own rebound. Cheyenne Trotter picks up the foul. So Shantice Craig is at the line for the and one. Shantice averages 11.2 points per game. Hits the free throw. 61% free throw shooter. Three for Shantice Craig. It's 12-5, the seven-point lead. Here with 5.50 remaining in the opening quarter. Olivia Hartman. Reverses, takes it across midcourt, breaks the timeline, gets it to Calvin. Calvin drives inside the arc, dishes to the corner. Trotter drives off the low block, layup is, oh, just off the front of the iron. And the rebound pulled down by Shantice Craig. But the balls get it back, and the jumper from Calvin is no good. And a ball is off of the balls, and it's going to stay with the Wabash Warriors. Seven point lead, 12 to five, five, 20 remaining. Andy Robinson getting ready to check into the game. Warriors have it in the front court. Wagner off the free throw line, feeds Craig down low. Her bait shot is good for Shantice Craig. That's five in the game for Shantice. And it's a nine point lead. Matty Kalman tried to dribble through the defender, the double team and a jump ball is called the possession arrow, is going to give it back to the Warriors. So Andy Robinson comes in and replaces Trotter, also coming into the game. Kendra Johnson, she's going to replace Maddie Calvin. From the far sideline, inbound trigger into the paint, low block. Shantese Craig steps down, shot partially blocked. Nice job by Hartman in the paint to block that shot. Has the ball taken away from her. The turnover and the bucket and the foul. The other way is the foul is going to be on Kendra Johnson as she just came in the game. Uh, 
We have a timeout on the floor here with 4.58 remaining. It's going to be a 60-second timeout. 16-5, to 5, the Wabash Valley Warriors over your Logan Lady Volunteers here on 103.5 ESPN.com. Our students are employed immediately. Sometimes they are employed before they get their associate's degree. I have a position working in early childhood. Dr. Marilyn Tolliver, my professor, uh, was able to really prepare me to be able to teach in a classroom um, as a lead teacher. To see them interact and engage in what I'm teaching them is life-changing. Welcome back to Brewer Gymnasium here on this Saturday afternoon. 15, 16 to 5 is our score. And at the line is going to be Shalana Wagner. Shalana was fouled. And she's shooting the and one. 65% free throw shooter. As Wagner's free throw is good. That's five in the game for Wagner. And... Balls break the press. They get it down to India Robinson. Her shot partially blocked. And the turnover comes the other way. Feed down low off the glass and good. As she was hung in the air, Madison Rochelle gets the field goal for the Lady Warriors. 19 to five as the ball's trying to break this press. Lob pass out to Kendra Johnson. She drives off the glass. Her shot just a little bit short on the layup. And the rebound controlled by Brooklyn Gray the other way. She throws it and throws it away. It goes off the end line, and that's going to give it back to the Vols. Five turnovers now on Wabash Valley, seven on the Lady Vols. 4.23 remaining here in the opening quarter. Inbound pass over on the far side. Shamira Brown gets it to Hartman. They find Riley Johnson. Back to Brown, jumper from 18 is no good, and the rebound controlled by Madison Rochelle for the Warriors. She brings it to length of the floor, the free throw line jumper off the front of the iron, no good. Rebound Warriors, as it was Jordan Shannon that got the rebound. Long three, though, from the top of the key is good from Trinity Harris. Three-pointer from Trinity, 22 to five now. 347, Bartman. Finds Brown. Brown's going to launch the three. Air ball. And saved but controlled by Jordan Shannon of Wabash Valley. Into the front court. Wagner. Bounce pass over on the left wing. They dish it to the corner. Left. Now it comes back to Wagner. Top of the key. Nobody in front of her. She fires the three. No good. Rebound controlled by Warriors. Back to Wagner. Free throw line. Low block. Dumps it down low to Craig. She misses the layup. Gets her own rebound. Gets fouled. And Chantice Craig now is going to go to the line and shoot her second and third free throw of the game. Foul was on India Robinson. Chantice Craig, we mentioned it earlier, she 11.2 points per game, shoots 62% from the line. Chantice from Fort Wayne, Indiana, stands 6-2 as she misses the first free throw. She's a sophomore. Now the Warriors come to the line. Jordan Shannon steps on the right side between two Vols. And on the other side, Trinity Harris. Second free throw from Craig is good. Six in the game for Shantice Craig. Craig checks out. Now coming into the game is Karen Brunson. Falls get the ball into the front court. India Robinson hands it off to the corner. Trotter feeds down low. That was intended for Kendra Johnson. 
but the Warriors come away with it. Turnover on the Vols to the right corner. Wagner between the leg dribble. Top of the key, thought about the three. Now it's Wagner that does launch the three. Off the uh, long rebound, Vols get the, get the ball. Shemire Brown into the front court, drives to the low block. Step back jumper from about 12 is good. Shemire Brown gets her first field, field goal of the game, and it's 23 to seven. Wagner drives the baseline, dishes to the corner left, now left wing. Head fake into the paint. Pull-up jumper from the free throw line is good from Trinity Harris. 25 to 7, 225 remaining. Pressure in the backcourt. Ball goes out of bounds. And they're going to say it was off of Wabash Valley and Luke Scheinecker doesn't like the call. It's going to be with the balls, though, and Shemire Brown turns the ball over as she tripped and fell to the floor just as she took the bounce pass. So now it's going to be the Warriors basketball. Trinity Harris feeds it into the paint. Coming out with it is Wagner. Shalana drives, puts it off the glass high. Rebound from... Uh, to Misha Dozier, she gets, she gets the bucket. Her first field goal of the game. And now it's 27 to seven, the 20 point lead. Vols turn it over into backcourt. The other way, bounce pass in the paint, scramble for it on the floor. Wagner comes away with it. Nice job by Jordan Shannon getting it to her. The three from the top of the keys, no good. And Trotter gets the rebound for the Lady Vols. Here comes Shamira Brown into the front court. Pulls up at the hash, throws it up top to Trotter. Cheyenne spins around, leaves it for Shamara. She pulls up the three, no good. Long rebound. Here comes Wagner. Outlet pass on the break. Nobody there defensively off the glass and good for Kieran Brunson. Kieran, her first field goal, 29 to seven. Maddie Calvin, her bounce pass is kicked away. Another turnover. Defensively, Wagner off the glass, the bucket and the foul. And Kendra Johnson just picked up personal foul number two. It's going to be the fourth team foul now on the Lady Vols. Shalana Wagner has seven points so far in the game. And she's at the line shooting the end one. Shalana, 65% free throw shooter. Averaging 19 points a game. Out of Detroit, Michigan, her first free throw is, or her free throw is good for the and one. That's eight now for Shalana Wagner. 32 to seven, minute 15, remaining here in the first quarter. Still pressured in the backcourt. India Robinson runs down the pass into the front court. She's gonna back it up over on the far hash. Drives inside the arc, dishes it to the corner. Trotter's three from the right corner, no good. And the rebound is grabbed by Tamisha Dozier. The foul is going to be on the Vols. Cheyenne Kendra Johnson. So Kendra in foul trouble here early in this game. She just picked up her third. And so Riley, Riley Johnson is going to come in to replace her. Is going to put Tamisha Dozier at the line. She's shooting the one and one. Hits the first one. Three in the game for Tamisha. 75% free throw shooter. Tamisha out of Louisville, Kentucky. The freshman stands 6-1. Hits the second free throw. Four in the game for Tamisha. Maddie Calvin tries to break down the press, does, gets it in the front court, but the pass is tipped away. Another turnover on the Lady Vols. Here come the Warriors. That's turnover number 13 unofficially. Dishes to the corner left. The three from there is buried by Kieran Brunson. Five now for Brunson. 30 point lead. Still here in the first quarter. 30 seconds remaining. Maddie Calvin's three. Little. Off the mark, out of bounds. And it's going to stay with 
the Lady Vols here with 25 seconds on the clock, 20 on the shot clock. Calvin triggers, gets it to Robinson. Robinson's shot is partially blocked, but a foul is called. And so Indy, India Robinson will go to the stripe as the foul was on Jordan Shannon. India shoots 61% from the stripe. First one is good. She averages just a touch over eight points per game. Gets her first point of the game here at the 23-second mark of the first quarter. Her second free throw rims out, and the rebound by the Warriors. The other way. Three ball from the right corner is buried by Curran Brunson. That's eight in the game for Brunson, her second three-pointer, and a foul is going to be called on Isha Williams. That's only the second team foul now on the Lady Warriors here this afternoon. There's eight seconds on the clock. Vols a chance to score here to close out the quarter. Calvin gets it to Robinson. Six, five. Indy's going to dribble around, top of the key. Jumper kicks it to the corner. Hartman's three at the buzzer. No good. And that's how we end the first quarter. 40 to 8 is the score here at the end of the first quarter. As the number 14 team in the country, the Warriors from Wabash Valley lead John A. Logan women 40 to Eight here as we end the first. We'll be back in 60 seconds on 103.5 ESPN.com. I'm the center director for Malone's Early Learning Center. You got to have that love and passion and being able to come here and see how rewarding it is to have a child learn how to tie their shoes or have a child learn how to stack blocks. It's, it's so rewarding. When I was at John A. Logan, it really gave me the mentality of we're coming in to teach the children, not to watch the children. And so it taught me the importance of engaging with them, becoming one with the classroom, and really having that involvement there. Welcome back to John A. Logan College here as we're heading to the second quarter. As, it, as we head to the second, Wabash Valley in control. They lead it 40 to 8. Leading score so far for Wabash Valley, the eight points by Shalana Wagner. Also the six from Shantice Craig. For the Lady Falls, it's the three from Maddie Calvin. Shamira Brown with two, Cheyenne Trotter with two, India Robinson with one. And the balls have the ball to start play here in the second quarter. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Lady Balls. They're moving right to left on your radio on your dial here this afternoon. We appreciate you tuning in here on 103.5 ESPN.com. Olivia Hartman, a little short jumper, her first field goal of the game, and it's 40 to 10, a 30-point lead for Wabash Valley. Ball's tipped away and Warriors turn it over. That's their sixth. But the ball's turn it away, turn it over the other way. That's the 14th. Here's the outlet pass to Wagner to the low block, throws it off the glass. Oh, rims out of there. And the big rebound pulled down by Cheyenne Trotter of the Lady Vols. She's gonna bring it in the front court. Tried to get it to feed it Riley Johnson down on the block. And it was just a little too strong. The turnover gives it back to Wabash Valley. These two teams met back on November 22nd, the last game before the Thanksgiving break. Wabash Valley won 94 to 59. They have the big 30 point lead here with five to play in the first half. Wagner between the circles, dribbles around toward the left side. Now brings it on the right side. Madison Rochelle drives off the glass and good. Rochelle has four in the game. 
averages 11 per game. 42 to 10. Falls need to get it into the front court. India Robinson finds Hartman, breaks it to Calvin, takes it to the hole off the glass, her shot blocked. She didn't quite hit the glass with the shot. Ball goes out of bounds and the volunteers will have it on the far end line. Wabash Valley, the number 14 team in the country. Hartman misses the shot and it goes out of bounds to the Lady Warriors. Number 14 in the country, a 19 game winning streak. They are an outstanding ball team. So Shalana Wagner from Detroit brings it across midcourt, leaves it for Rochelle. She drives her shot partially blocked. Here come the Lady Balls. It's three on two. Hartman into the front court, pulls up just short of the free throw line. Now dribbles, leaves it for Trotter. Maddie Calvin gets it on the right wing. Her three's off the mark. Ball is out of bounds. And that was off of Isha Williams. And so it's going to stay with the Volunteers. Maddie Calvin huffing and puffing on the far end line. Throws it in to Riley Johnson. Back to Calvin. Her three partially blocked. Here come the Warriors after the rebound. Outlet pass to Wagner. Nobody there off the glass and the layup is good for Shalana Wagner, who's the first to double digits here this afternoon. Ten points in the game for Wagner. And we have a timeout with eight minutes and one second showing on the second quarter clock. It's going to be a 30-second break. We'll take a break as well here on 103.5 ESPN.com. Welcome to Matt. How can I help you? Hey, welcome to Mackey's Pizza. Uh, every Monday night we have half price cheese, bre uh, cheese breadsticks. Uh, Monday through Friday we have a great lunch special. We can get eight inch pizza, a, a small salad, and a drink for $7.49. So come out and see us and uh, enjoy everything at Mackey's. John A is the only auto collision program in. <laughs> Eight minutes and one second remaining here in the second quarter. 44 to 10 is the score. Wabash Valley over the Lady Balls here this afternoon. Of course, Amanda Shelby squad playing short. On Wednesday night, they had eight players and played pretty well, but they wound up getting beat by 10. And as they come into the gate today's game, they wind up with one of those eight that's unable to play, and that was Ty Wolford Bird, who's out with illness. So seven players for Coach Matt Crane and head coach Amanda Shelby. Balls have it, length of the floor to go. Maddie Calvin charges ahead, gets it to Indy Robinson, but she can't control it. Another turnover, the outlet pass, and the layup the other way is good from Brooklyn Gray. Seven in the game in the game for Gray. Balls have it. Trotter over on the far side, finds Riley Johnson down low. Her layup is no good, but she gets fouled, and Riley can go to the line and shoot two for the Lady Balls. Val is on Isha Williams. Isha Williams. That's the second on Williams, and Riley Johnson, chance to get into the scorebook, and she does. Riley averaging five and a half points a game out of O'Fallon, Illinois. Hit, so the second rolls out. And the Warriors get the rebound. Quickly the other way. Head fake, ball fake in the layup by Maddie Rochelle. Six in the game for Rochelle. 48-11. Olivia Hartman finds India Robinson. Drives her shot partially blocked, and Indy will go to the line. She has a chance to shoot two free, two free throws. Shantice picks up her first foul. Shantice Craig. And so Indy Robinson, who is one for two from the line, hits the first of two here. Two points for India. 
Averages eight, shoots 61% from the stripe. Second is good. Three for four in the game now for Robinson. Quickly the other way, Isha Williams dishes it to Wagner, takes it in the free throw line, kicks it back to the corner or to the wing left. The three from there's no good. Down on the floor, Shantice Craig, and she gets wrapped up. And timeout is called by Luke Scheinecker of the Lady Warriors with 7.03 on the clock. It's 48 to 13, a 35 point lead for the Warriors. We'll be back in 30 here on 103.5 ESPN.com. John A. is the only auto collision program in Southern Illinois. Uh, there's nobody else that offers it. We draw students from all over because there's just nobody else that offers the programs. The student-teacher relationship is one of the most important parts of this job. You can't really go wrong here. Anything you want to learn, you can learn it here. Whenever I started the program, I didn't feel too 110% about it. Like I wasn't sure how I was going to do, but that's what makes me confident. It's the teacher and the students that I'm surrounded by. 48 to 13, our score. Seven minutes remaining in the first half. Steve McKenzie with you this afternoon. Matt Varney calling the Murfreesboro Red Devils boys game today at the tournament. Not available. Travel is called on Shantice Craig. That's going to be the seventh turnover unofficially on the Warriors. India Robinson. Bounce pass to the far side to Hartman. Hartman dribbles through to the backcourt. Can't get across the line, though. Needs to get it across. And another 10-second call is called. A backcourt violation. 17th turnover now on the Lady Vols. Boy, the pressure by the Warriors is just relentless. That's got to be the third or fourth backcourt violation on the Lady Vols, but a travel the other way on uh, Shalana Wagner gives it back to the Lady Vols. Trotter into the front court. Riley Johnson, head fake, takes it to the block. Nice move from Riley. Head fake and got the defender in the air. She drove by. So Riley has three points. Crossover by Wagner. Just throws it at the rim, gets it to fall. And Riley Johnson, who just scored on the other end, picks up her foul. Nope, they're going to call it actually on Shamira Brown. First foul on Shamira. The Shalana Wagner. She's got a dozen and shooting the and one and converted. 13 now for Shalana. She's six off of her average per game. India Robinson. This time she drives in front of into the front court. Finds Hartman, stutter step by Hartman, step back jumper from about 12 is no good. And the rebound pulled down by Brooklyn Gray. Outlet pass. Down low, the ball goes out of bounds as it was intended for Tamisha Dozier. But she just couldn't pick up the ball cleanly. And it goes out of bounds. And the Vols just turn it over in the backcourt as the pass was off the hands of Robinson, and now the Warriors get the opportunity. Crossover dribble into the paint, dishing it down low. And a, and a foul is going to be called on Brooklyn Gray as she pushed off with the forearm. And that's going to give it. The drive by Wagner is no good and she gets fouled it's on riley johnson that's going to be the first on riley and so now shalana wagner goes to the line for two as she was fouled while shooting 51 15. first free throw is good men will be playing wabash valley coming up Immediately after this game, Mike Murphy will have the call on 103.5 ESPN and here on the live stream from LeBond Production Group as Wagner hits both free throws. 
15 now for Shalana. Falls. Riley Johnson controls, but they turn it right back over the other way. The layup with the left hand is good from Brooklyn Gray. Nine in the game for Gray. Hartman finds an opening, pulls up just short of midcourt. Jump ball. Possession arrow gives it back to the Warriors. That's the 20th turnover on the Lady Balls here in the first half. Just do not have an answer for the defense and the full court press by the Lady Warriors. So they have it in the front court. Williams dishes to Rochelle. Rochelle's jumper's no good. And Hartman comes away with for the Lady Balls. Outlet pass. Finds India Robinson. The layup is good the other way. Six in the game for India. 55-17. Over to the corner left, a three from the Warriors is good, and a foul. Isha Williams pops it from the corner left. The foul was on Madison Calvin. And Isha Williams, who averages 10 a game, has the free throw coming for the chance at the four-point play. Asia shoots 68% from the stripe. This is her first trip to the line. And she's got the touch. Six now for Asia Williams. Falls in the front court. There's India Robinson. Drives it to the free throw line. Over to the corner. Riley Johnson. Her pass picked off. It was intended for Maddie Calvin. And foul the other way is going to be called on Shamira Brown. Number two on Shamira. And so Shalana Wagner goes to the line again. Shalana shooting two. First one rims out. 15 points in the game from Shalana. Second is in the air and good. 16. So Karen Brunson comes in to replace Isha Williams. Maddie Calvin, bounce pass over on the far side to Kendra Johnson. She finds Riley Johnson at the block, who gets it to Brown. Brown drives, right-hand floater just off the mark. Rebound volunteers. Riley Johnson misses the shot, and the rebound, the Warriors coming away with it to Misha Dozier. Here comes Wagner across midcourt. Hands it off, driving into the paint. Harris, jumper is good from Trinity Harris. Seven now in the game for Trinity. And the balls get into the front court. To the corner, Riley Johnson down in the paint. Puts it up with the left hand. Oh, just a little too strong. And the Warriors the rebound. To the corner, head fake, baseline drive. Up top it goes to Wagner. Brown on her. Wagner drives on Brown, bumps her, shot up, no good. Rebound controlled by Kennedy or Kendra Johnson. She drives into the front court to the baseline. Now finds Maddie Calvin. Her open three is good from the right wing. It's the second three in the game for Maddie. 62-20, 42-point lead. Wagner just drives right down the baseline and gets fouled from Riley Johnson. That is foul number two on Riley. Shalana Wagner goes to the line again. Getting ready to shoot her eighth free throw. She's made five of the eight. First one is good. 323 remaining in the half. 63-20. Second is good as well. 18 now for Wagner. Trying to dribble through the defense. 
Pass is tipped away. It's saved by the Warriors. Dumps it down low. Oh, nice head fake by Jordan Shannon. Balls come away with a turnover on the Warriors, and a foul is called, I believe, on Jordan Shannon. It's going to be the second on Jordan. Spells Jordan, Z-H-O-R-D-O-N. The ball's trigger. Shamire Brown kicks it to the corner. The three is good by Kendra Johnson. Warriors, long three, top of the key, short. Madison Calvin gets the rebound for the Volunteers. She takes it across midcourt, has her pocket picked. The other way, here comes Wagner. Off the glass, man, gets the left-hand layup to go. 20 now in the game for Wagner. 66-23. Shamire Brown, outlet pass is saved. Maddie Calvin's gonna keep it though for the balls. Dishes to the corner right, head fake, inside the arc, shot blocked. And the foul will be on Trinity Harris. So now, Kendra Johnson will go to the line. Kendra shooting two. She's got three points here in the game, shoots 80% from the strike. First free throw is good. Four for Kendra. Kendra out of Pocahontas, Arkansas, hits both. Five for Kendra, she averages seven a game. But the other way, quickly with the bucket. That's Shania Brown with her first field goal of the game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The ball's turn it over. And it is Jordan Shannon that gets the bucket the other way. That's her first field goal. They trap Madison Calvin on the far side, needs help. And Jordan Shannon steals it. And the other way, Madison Calvin hits the deck hard. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor as trainer Brad Brush comes out to work with Madison Cowman. We'll take a break as well. We'll be back in 60 seconds here on 103.5 ESPN.com. Hi, guys. TJ Cowan from Cold-Blooded. Coming to you, wanted to introduce the Cold-Blooded Single Barrel Smokehouse. Here at Johnny Logan College, you guys are used to our coffee. Now come check out our food. Not your average college, not your average food. Hey, welcome to Mackey's. How can I help you? Hey, welcome to Mackey's Pizza. Uh, every Monday night we have half price cheese, bre uh, cheese breadsticks. Uh, Monday through Friday we have a great lunch special. We can get eight inch pizza, a, a small salad, and a drink for $7.49. So come out and see us and uh, enjoy everything at Mackey's. Hey, box, box, box. Madison Kalman's able to walk off the floor under her own power. Looked a lot worse than it really was, but she's gonna get looked at and get checked out further as we resume play with a minute 18 remaining. In the first half, balls with the basketball. Shamire Brown drives inside the arc, dishes to the corner. Three from there is good from Kendra Johnson. Her second three-pointer of the game. Eight points for Johnson. Now driving around inside the lane, stops just on the low block. Little short jumper, too strong. And the rebound from Craig is put back in good. Eight for Shantice Craig. 74-28, 42 seconds remaining 
here in the second quarter. India Robinson trying to drive and lost the handle and went off her left leg. And she was able to slice her way through the defense. Here come the Warriors. Over to the left wing. The three is no good. India Robinson battling for the rebound, ties it up with Jordan Shannon. And the possession are on the jump ball, gives it back to the Lady Vols. 11 turnovers on the Lady Warriors. With 25 seconds remaining, volunteers a chance to close it out here. No shot clock is off. Shamir Brown tried the right hand runner, turns it over the other way, but missing the layup. But the rebound, Warriors, and a foul from behind. I believe that may be on Olivia Hartman. Nope, Shamira Brown. It's going to be three on Shamira. And so, Karen Brunson is making her first trip to the free throw line. She'll be shooting two. She's got eight points, hits the first free throw. Shoots 74% from the line. Karen Brunson, Brunson rather, from Indianapolis. The second is good. She's in double digits now. Shalana Wagner with 20, Kieran Brunson with 10 for the Warriors. Six seconds, five seconds, four on the clock. The shot from Hartman is no good, and that ends this first half of basketball. 76 to 28. It is Wabash Valley Warriors over the Lady Vols. We'll pause for six. Our students are employed immediately. Sometimes they are employed before they get their associate's degree. I have a position working in early childhood. Dr. Marilyn Tolliver, my professor, uh, was able to really prepare me to be able to teach in a classroom um, as a lead teacher. To see them interact and engage in what I'm teaching them is life changing. I'm the center director for Malone's Early Learning Center. You got to have that love and passion and being able to come here and see how rewarding it is to have a child learn how to tie their shoes or have a child learn how to stack blocks. It's, it's so rewarding. When I was at John A. Logan, it really gave me the mentality of we're coming in to teach the children, not to watch the children. And so it taught me the importance of engaging with them, becoming one with the classroom and really having that involvement there. Welcome to Mackey's. How can I help you? Hey, welcome to Mackey's Pizza. Uh, every Monday night we have half price cheese, bre uh, cheese bread sticks. Uh, Monday through Friday we have a great lunch special. We can get eight inch pizza, a, a small salad, and a drink for $7.49. So come out and see us and uh, enjoy everything at Mackey's. John A is the only auto collision program in Southern Illinois. Uh, there's nobody else that offers it. We draw students from all over because there's just nobody else that offers the programs. The student-teacher relationship is one of the most important parts of this job. You can't really go wrong here. Anything you want to learn, you can learn it here. Whenever I started the program, I didn't feel too 110% about it. Like, I wasn't sure how I was going to do, but that's what makes me confident. It's the teacher and the students that I'm surrounded by. Hi guys, TJ Cowan from Cold-Blooded. 
coming to you, wanted to introduce the cold-blooded single barrel smokehouse. Here at Johnny Logan College, you guys are used to our coffee, now come check out our food. Not your average college, not your average food. Let's talk about, you know, you're, you're kind of in a position um, as, as one of the top players, not just on, on with Logan. There's so many top players with Logan, but you, you, you get the, the big signing to go to Mizzou. You're following Sean East, who was player of the year a year ago. You had Jamarian Sharp, who's now at Western Kentucky, defensive player of the year. Then before that, Jay Scrub. The 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 lineage of this Logan program and what Tyler uh, and what Kyle built and what Tyler, you're kind of the first cog in 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 this program that Tyler's putting together. How how do how do you like that? I love it. I mean, um, like uh, I spoke to Kyle about if I would have came with Scrubs year, I probably wouldn't have had the spotlight. You know what I'm saying? We would have been sharing. You know what I'm saying? But it would have been great either way. But um. I love it. I love it. I love that I came, and I love that I'm playing for Coach Tyler. Like, it's just a new, I won't say a new era, but just a new stage because it was Cal. Cal had his time. Now it's Tyler. I lo- uh, I'm i glad to be the first one. What do you say to the younger guys that come in? Um, about uh, about the program and the and the tradition that's been built over the last 10, 12 years? Great program. I, I recommend it to anyone, really. Uh, a lot of kids reach out, and I tell them, Logan, you go Juco, come to John A for sure. And a top program in the country. For top sure. number six right now. Yeah. We'll be number one soon. <laughs> sure. Yes, yes, we will. That is uh, Kurt Lewis and uh, uh, Coach Tad Andrews. Tad, it's been a lot of fun. If you watch the uh, uh, the Vols bench and you see Tyler, he's the one that puts the mileage on the, on the kicks when he's walking back and forth on the sideline. But Tad's the one you see that jumps off – up jumps up behind him and is barking at everybody there but uh it's got to be a lot of fun for you um to be on that on that sideline with with this group of guys oh absolutely and i think when i first got here i learned that logan basketball just the program that has been you know going on for for years with the with coach smith peters with coach kyle and then and then coach tyler um you know the energy that they that they have brought and now it's I'm in a position where hey it's that's that's part of the job description you know bring the energy get the guys ready because um, it's momentum they feed off that it's contagious and uh, you know and you know I wasn't sure exactly coming in what what my role was going to be but uh, our first jamboree uh, coach Smith Peters uh, definitely let me know uh, hey we I, we gotta have it we gotta you know be up and going and stuff and so i i figured out quick uh that 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 was how he wanted everything to to be and just up tempo and had energetic stuff like that but i know uh mike murphy you know he asked uh kurt you know a couple questions but first of all that whole situation or uh that whole dunk that was on overtime you might have asked that yeah it definitely was on overtime that was Talk about some pub. That was that was some pub right there, and and that was cool to see. You know, Kurt Kurt Lewis all all over the internet on Twitter, Instagram, and stuff like that. And you know, I think that's what um, speaks for Coach Kyle and Coach Tyler. They you know they put this 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 program on a national. This everybody's paying attention to it. Everybody knows about it. You know, everybody. Um, yeah, I don't Logan. Yeah, that's in Southern. You know, so. That's really cool to to be a part of, and uh, and so um, other than that, you know, it's it's great. I I love it here. It's it's amazing. The the, the energy, the everything. It's it couldn't be a, a, a better group. But uh, but also too, I think Mike Murphy said something to Kurt about you know last year's team and the teams the last few years compared to this team and and. How Kurt was saying, yeah, no, this team has got it. And Mike Murphy, you know, notices the, the last year's team that went to Hutch and stuff. And I think that has to do with the coaching. I think we have a better head coach this year. Than, than I, and I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> no. But uh, we'll, but, we'll uh, record that and send that yeah, off to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, it's it's fun. It's fun. And this is a winning program. 
and it has been going on for a while and and just to be a part of it is is unbelievable i mean we're winning a lot and and i i like to be around it and it's a great atmosphere well this is a team that's won 13 straight there's a big matchup tomorrow night there is no doubt about it on the road at swick everybody's got the arrows pointing at the target on your back um and and you guys you just seem like you go out there and you just know take care of business but but this is a big game tomorrow night Swick, especially after their win over uh, Vincennes. Absolutely, yeah. And and Coach Tyler, what he does a really good job at, and he's very humble about it, is he gets these guys to play. He 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 knows what to say. He knows exactly. He I mean, his preparation for um, games and stuff like that. I like to call it uncommon preparation. So, you know, get these guys ready and getting them to play. You know, it's un- unbelievable. I mean. The, the stuff we've done before Christmas and and how we're able to I don't know if if you guys noticed but I know Mike Murphy said something about yesterday's game when we came out second half I think you know he jokingly said hey these guys you know somebody got a somebody got a, a lecture you know and I, <laughs> I thought that was funny but no that's Coach Tyler right there Coach Tyler's getting these guys ready hey this is what we have to do this is our goal remember he does a great job reminding the guys this is where we want to go to. If there's a correlation between this practice today and, the, and this game today to Hutch. Absolutely. That's assistant coach Tad Andrews, Kurt Lewis with us. Murph, I'll give you the last question for the guys. Well, I just wanted to, you know, just say that tomorrow night's going to be a, a very tough game. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of battles up at Swick and Belleville's, a, you know, but we've had some pretty good luck up there the last few years. Uh, but don't don't give the guys a heart attack up there tomorrow, Kurt, and and come out there and do that pity pat around for Lola. Just come out there and squash them early and get up by twenty. And and no no no, don't do that because you did that at that uh, earlier game and you got up by seventeen and lost that lead. Just just come out and just methodically put them. Well, do anything you want because uh, you're you're the guy that's uh, that's leading this team and and there's some great players along with you, Q and. And uh, I, you know, you know who's becoming my favorite player, uh, Kurt, is Sean Smith. This guy, he's like a spider on defense, and he's getting better on offense every game. And uh, there's so many interchangeable parts, guys. You know, I mean, I, I just wish you all the best. I got to go and do a high school game. It'll probably be boring after what I saw last night with you guys. Uh, but uh, keep keep up the fight, and good luck tomorrow night up at Belleville. I appreciate you. Lewis, that's Kurt Lewis and uh, assistant coach Ted Andrews. Guys, good luck tomorrow night, and uh, congratulations on the win last night. And we'll look for that thirty-point game coming up on Saturday from Kurt, and uh, and we'll get all the the highlight reels ready and get those posted. We'll we'll help uh, pump up the, the 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 views on the Instagram and and the TikTok and everything. Kurt Lewis <laughs> and uh, Ted Andrews joining us here on Talking Vols. Welcome to Matt. Talking to you. Hey, welcome to Mackey's Pizza. Uh, every Monday night we have half price cheese, bre- uh, cheese breadsticks. Uh, Monday through Friday we have a great lunch special. We can get eight inch pizza, a, a small salad, and a drink for $7.49. So come out and see us and uh, enjoy everything at Mackey's. Our students are employed immediately. Sometimes they are employed before they get their associate's degree. I have a position working in early childhood. Dr. Marilyn Tolliver, my professor, uh, was able to really prepare me to be able to teach in a classroom um, as a lead teacher. To see them interact and engage in what I'm teaching them is life-changing. Six to twenty-eight is our score. Uh, Wabash Valley Warriors, the number fourteen team in the country, they are riding a nineteen-game winning streak as they come into Logan here this afternoon, and they are showing why 
They're a top 15 program in the country as they have hung 76 points here on the board in the first half. Volunteers with 27 turnovers. That back court pressure, the full court press applied by the Lady Warriors is a tough to beat. And the Warriors on the other side have turned it over just 11 times. At the half, SIU leads um, Missouri State. That is 30 to 25. Coming up at 3 o'clock, it will be the men here at John A. Logan College as they take on Wabash Valley. John A.'s men, they are, let's see here, the number six team in the country, and they are just having a fantastic season. As they come into the game, they are 16-2 overall, riding a 14-game winning streak, and they'll be taking on Wabash Valley here at the top of the hour. You'll hear that with Mike Murphy on 103.5 ESPN. Both teams back out on the floor as uh, we are getting ready to start the second half. When you look at the scoring, um, it, it the balls are led by the eight points from Kendra Johnson, six from Madison Calvin. And Maddie appears to be okay after taking that hard fall there at the end of the second quarter. Needed a little bit of assistance. I think it may have knocked the wind out of her, but she's able to get back up, walk off under her own power, and she will start here in the second half for Coach Amanda Shelby. And the Lady Vols. Start to see the crowd start to fill in here at uh, Brewer Gymnasium as the men will be playing this afternoon. Of course, today it's NFL football, so a lot of people may stay home and, and uh, watch those games here this afternoon. Two games today, two games tomorrow. We'll find out who will be playing in the AFC and the NFC Championship games next week. It's a full day of weekend. There's high school basketball tournaments taking place. I'm getting ready to head to Massac County for a uh, 4-15 game as soon as this one wraps up. Um, for Carterville, Mike Murphy will be in the chair to bring you the men's game here. Start tip-off scheduled at 3 o'clock. As the Warriors are going to have it to start play in the second half, they lead it 76-28. to 28. With the basketball, Shalana Wagner, the leading scorer in the game with 20 points. She runs the point for uh, Luke Scheinecker and this uh, Warriors team. Skip pass over to the right corner. The Warriors are going to work it around, and an open three is buried from the right wing by Madison Rochelle. That's her first three-pointer of the game. She's got nine. And here come the balls into the front court. Shamire Brown gets it to Trotter. Now to Riley Johnson. Her jumper from the free throw line is good. That's five in the game for Riley. And it's 79 to 30. Here come the Warriors. Corner right, now to Wagner between the circles. Dribbles once, twice, three times with the hand, pulls up, reverses to the right side. Back to the corner. That's Williams. Esha Williams to Rochelle down in the paint. Shantice Craig. Lost the ball, but it stays with the Warriors. Down low, they feed Craig on the block. She gets the layup and the foul. And Shantice Craig from Fort Wayne, Indiana, will go to the line to shoot the and one. The foul is going to be on Shamira Brown, and that's going to be the fourth on Shamira. Shantice with 10. She joins the double-digit club here this afternoon. Riley Johnson comes out. Coming into the game is going to be Kendra Johnson. Shantice hits the free throw. 11 for her. Kendra Johnson is going to replace Shamira as she comes to the sideline and sets down. Tough day for the Lady Vols. Not a whole lot you can do, though. Only seven players available today for Amanda Shelby. But this uh, Warriors team is just an outstanding ball club. Relentless on the defensive end of the floor. Balls have it in the front court. Kicks it to the corner, and the throw just a little bit too high for India Robinson. Gives it back to the Warriors. 27 turnovers unofficially for the Lady Balls in the first half. That's the first turnover here in the second half. Wagner across the timeline for the Warriors. Hartman on her defensively, but Wagner drives, puts a layup up no good. And the rebound dove and saved by the Volunteers. Nice job by India Robinson. 
Madison Calvin seems to be okay. Spins at the free throw line. Has the ball tied up. And a ball is tied up. Jump ball. And the possession arrow is going to keep it with the Lady Vols. It's a 10 set instead of the jump ball, it's a 10 second violation. And so that ball will actually go to the Warriors. Maddie was trying to get it across the timeline and was right there, got cut off and got had the ball tied up. So the turnover gives it back to the Warriors. Ball tipped around and the turnover on the Warriors their first, second half turnover. Outlet pass is picked off. The Warriors grab it. Now on the break to the glass. The shot is no good. Olivia Hartman the rebound. Outlet pass for Maddie Calvin. But it was tracked down from behind by Madison Rochelle. And back to the Warriors. Wagner gets bumped by India Robinson. India just picked up her second foul. That's number two. Two team fouls on the Lady Vols. 7.41 remaining here in the third. Long three is good from the right corner by Isha Williams. That's her second three of the game. She's got nine. And now Madison Kalman dribbles around. Vols have a chance to set the offense first time in a while. And actually, they've probably only set the offense maybe two or three times. Nice feed to the block, Trotter. Kicks it to Johnson, and her three's no good, but Hartman gets the rebound. Head fake back to Kendra Johnson. Her three from the corner's no good, and now it's Wagner, the rebound. Outlet pass to Isha Williams off the glass and good. 11 now. Isha joins the double-digit club. One, two, three, four. Warriors in double digits. And the ball was turned over, giving it back to the Warriors. Coming out of the game, Cheyenne Trotter comes to the sideline. And let's see here. Riley Johnson is in the game for Trotter. Wagner for the Warriors. Between the circles, to the elbow, turnaround jumper from Brooklyn Gray is good. She's in double digits now with 11. 89 to 30, 59 point lead. 76 to 28 to score at the break. Driving with the ball, India Robinson tries to bang it off the glass, no good. Long rebound and a foul is gonna be called on India Robinson. Number three on Indy, and the third team foul on the Vols here in the third quarter. Warriors. Shalana Wagner slows the pace, finds Williams. Williams left of the circle, back to Wagner, right of the circle. Looks inside. 15-foot jumper is, hits the rim twice, no good, but the putback is good from Brooklyn Gray, 13 for Brooklyn, 91 to 30. Hartman pulls up on the right wing, feeds Riley Johnson, back to Hartman, head fake by Olivia. Now to Riley Johnson, her jumper from just inside the arc, no good. Shantese Craig, the rebound, outlet pass, to Rochelle, she misses the layup. But the rebound to the Warriors. Spin move on the low block, throws it at the glass, and good is Brooklyn Gray. 15 for Brooklyn, she averages 10 a game. 93 to 30. Falls with it, Robinson around the screen to the baseline, jumper from 12 is good from India Robinson. That's eight now for India. 
Wagner. In the front court. To Isha Williams, they feed it into the paint to Gray. Herder jumper with the left hand is no good, but Craig is there to clean it up. 13 for Shanice Craig. 425 remaining here in the third quarter. India Robinson needs some help. Pulls up the dribble, gets it from Olivia Hartman. Olivia looks inside, holds the ball on her right hip. 10, 9, 8 on the shot clock. 4, 07 remaining in the third. Hartman's jumper in and out, no good. India Robinson the rebound and her shot blocked. It goes out of bounds and they're going to say it was off the hands of Isha Williams of the Warriors. Five new replacements now for Luke Scheidecker. Coming into the game will be Jordan Shannon. Tamisha Dozier checks in, and we have a timeout on the floor. It'll be a 60-second timeout. Four minutes remaining here in the third. It's 95-32. It's all Wabash Valley here on 103.5 ESPN.com. My name is Lee Ecklin. I'm the center director for Malone's Early Learning Center. You gotta have that love and passion and being able to come here and see how rewarding it is to have a child learn how to tie their shoes or have a child learn how to stack blocks. It's, it's so rewarding. When I was at John A. Logan, it really gave me the mentality of we're coming in to teach the children, not to watch the children. And so it taught me the importance of engaging with them, becoming one with the classroom and really having that involvement there. Back at Brewer Gymnasium, Dave McKenzie with you, 95 to 32 with four minutes remaining in the third quarter. It is all Wabash Valley Warriors here in this uh, girls game at John A. Logan College. Wabash Valley, the number 14 team in the country. Indy Robinson found a lane, gets the shot off, but she got fouled and a blocking foul is called on Shania Brown. It's gonna be the first on Brown. That's the first team foul on the Warriors here in the second half. And India Robinson can shoot two. She is three for four from the stripe in the game so far. Shoot 61% from the line on the season. The first one is in the air and it's short. Next game for the Lady Volunteers. will be at Kaskaskia. Missed, uh, Rob Robinson missed the free throw. Warriors get the basketball, it goes out of bounds. And the turnover's gonna give it back to the Volunteers. So Wednesday night, Lady Vols will be back in action at Kaskaskia. Matt Varney will have the call for you. Here on 103.5 ESPN.com. Volunteers basketball. Top of, right of the circle rather. Olivia Hartman feeds it to India Robinson. Riley Johnson, nice head fake jumper. Was too strong, didn't hit anything. And the ball off to the Warriors. They're on the run the other way. Shania Brown pulls up the dribble, feeds it into the post. Turn around with the left hand was short. Rebound to Olivia Hartman for the balls. She's out and running. Tries to take it to the rim, misses the layup, but gets the rebound herself. Now Madison Calvin, head full of steam down the post, lays it up with the right hand and good. Eight for Madison Calvin. She averages 10 a game, 95 to 34, 250 remaining in the third quarter. Left wing. That's Trinity Harris. Once the clear, get hands it off, hands it to Jade Salters, who gets the layup down the left-hand side of the... Yeah. 
That was Dozier actually with the bucket the other end. She's got six. Falls with the ball though. 97-34. 12 on the shot clock. Calvin drives, gets fouled as she drove to the glass. The foul is gonna be Tamisha Dozier. And so Madison Calvin, who shoots 73% from the line, is going to be shooting two. She's got two three-pointers and a field goal, and the first free throw is good. Nine in the game. She leads the balls in scoring here. Second puts her at 10. She's the first player to double digits for the balls. 97-35, and the reach-in foul, and the bucket is good on the other end. On the drive by Trinity Harris. India Robinson just picked up foul number four. So Trinity Harris gets the field goal, nine for Trinity. She shoots almost 80% from the strike, but she misses that one. Rebound Warriors. And it was actually out of bounds, and it's going to give it back to the Vols, to Lady Vols, the length of the floor to go. Just over two to play here in the third. Maddie Calvin, crossover dribble. Robinson. Now to Johnson. Riley Johnson drives through the free throw line, hops over, throws it to Hartman. Hartman on the left wing finds Maddie Calvin. Dribbles with the right hand, drives into the paint. Kicks it to Kendra Johnson. Her shot no good. Long rebound. Pulled away by the Warriors. Three on nobody back. And the layup is good from Jade Salters. One oh one to thirty six. Falls basketball. Ball is tipped out of bounds. And it's gonna stay here with the Johnny Logan. Volunteers. Triggering. Kendra Johnson feeds Riley Johnson. And the pass is thrown into the crowd, but it was tipped. And I think it was off the hand of Jade Salters. So coming out of the game is going to be Trinity Harris. Coming into the game is Shania Brown. Falls with it. Madison Calvin, 10 seconds on the clock, finds Hartman in the corner right. Pulls up the dribble, wants to feed Riley Johnson. Her turnaround jumper from the elbow is good. Seven for Riley. And the Warriors in the front court. Nobody comes out to guard, the jumper is no good. She gets her own rebound. Shania Brown tries to feed the post. It's picked up, thrown up and in by Jordan Shannon. Six in the game for Jordan. One oh three thirty eight. Thirty seconds remaining in the third. Riley Johnson to Madison Calvin. Her jumper for threes, no good. Rebound India Robinson. Dribbles out. Has the ball tipped, but she gets it back. Tipped again. She gets it again. Pulls up. Needs some help. Gets it from Hartman. Hartman on the right wing. Twenty seconds remaining. Ten on the shot clock. Hartman backs it up to the hash, drives to the top of the key. Three for Maddie Calvin from the left wing's no good. Nice job by Riley Johnson getting the rebound. And a foul is going to be called on number four. That's Jade Salters. The first personal foul on Jade Salters. The third team foul. So ten and a half seconds. For the balls to score, they feed Riley Johnson. Misses the layup, but the other side after the rebound, India Robinson. That's 10 in the game for India. The shot with one second left is no good from Jordan Shannon. And that ends the third quarter. At the end of three, it is 103 to 40 here at John A. Logan College on 103.5 ESPN.com. Welcome to Mackey's. How can I help you? Hey, welcome to Mackey's Pizza. Uh, every Monday night we have half price cheese, bre uh, cheese breadsticks. Uh, Monday through Friday we have a great lunch special. We can get 8 inch pizza, a, a small salad, and a drink for $7.49. 
So come out and see us and uh, enjoy everything at Mackey's. John A. is the only auto collision program in Southern Illinois. Uh, there's nobody else that offers it. We draw students from all over because there's just nobody else that offers the programs. The student-teacher relationship is one of the most important parts of this job. You can't really go wrong here. Anything you want to learn, you can learn it here. Whenever I started the program, I didn't feel too 110% about it. Like I wasn't sure how I was going to do, but that's what makes me confident. It's the teacher and the students that I'm surrounded by. Back at John A. Logan College, Dave McKenzie with you. Ten minutes remaining in this game as we start the fourth quarter. And it's all Wabash Valley, 103-40. to SIU on the road at Missouri State. They lead Missouri State with 12.54 remaining in the second half. It's... 40 to 33. SIU the seven point lead. Balls have it to start play here in the fourth quarter. Ball out of bounds and the turnover gives it back to the Warriors. Shalana Wagner, the jumper is no good from Brooklyn Gray, balls tied up as Kendra Johnson was able to get a hand on it. Tied up between Kendra and Shantice Craig. Possession arrow keeps it with the Volunteers, or the Warriors rather, balls forced the turnover. Riley Johnson got the turnover. The ball's the length of the floor to go. Shemire Brown is back in the game. She's playing with four fouls. Kicks the ball, dribbles it off of her foot, turns it over, and gives it back to the Warriors. Unofficially, the seventh turnover here on the Lady Balls in the second half. 28 turnovers for the Balls in the first half. Wagner found an opening. Dishes it, little short jumpers good from Brooklyn Gray. 17 as Gray hits from about 12 feet. 105 to 40. Under nine to play. Schmeyer Brown, pass picked off. Warriors the other way. Two on one, Schmeyer just backs away and gives her the layup. That's Madison Rochelle. She's in double digits now with 11. 107 to 40. Trotter has it on the block, off the glass, misses the shot. Riley Johnson is there for the putback and good. Nice job by Riley Johnson. She's had a good game, nine points. Played hard. It's hit some shots for the Lady Vols. The three's no good. Shantice Craig's putback is no good. And it's Riley Johnson with the rebound and the outlet pass. Ball's in the front court. Bounce pass over to the far side. India Robinson's jumpers off the mark. And Kendra Johnson just picked up her fourth foul. So Kendra Johnson with four, Shamira Brown with four, India Robinson with four. Shantice Craig checks out for the Lady Ball, Lady Warriors rather. And into the game. Replacing her. Down into the paint. Tamisha Dozier. Ball's on the floor. Nice hustle by both teams. And it's gonna be white basketball. That's the Lady Balls. As diving in there, I believe it was Kendra Johnson. So Shamir Brown dribbles across midcourt, right side of the circle, pulls up the right wing, finds Indy Robinson. She looks inside, feeds it to Riley Johnson. Got a did nice job getting the defender on her back, and that was Brooklyn Gray.
A foul was called on Isha Williams, her third. And so Riley Johnson is at the line. First free throw from Riley is a little bit short. Just under 45% from the free throw line. She's got nine points in the contest. Averages five a game. Here's the second, and that's good. Double digits for Riley. She and India Robinson with 10. Madison Calvin with 10. So three players with 10 and a travel. On the other end, by Wagner's going to give it back to the Lady Vols. Just over seven minutes remaining. Brown hands it to Robinson. Robinson tried to feed the post. That is Wagner, excuse me, Kendra Johnson. But the Vols turn it over. The other way, the layup no good. Robinson gets the board for the Volunteers. Brings it into the front court herself. Leaves it in the side by Kendra Johnson, and the three is good. That's the third three in the game for Kendra. Average of seven, has 11 in the other way. Wagner gets the, re gets the field goal. That's her first points here in the second half. She had 20 first half points. 109-46, just over six to play. Trotter dribbles around, can't get the shot off. Riley Johnson winds up with it, but turns it over. And the Warriors into the front court. Wagner to the glass, gets fouled, pushed from behind. Riley Johnson has her third foul of the game. <laughs> Shalana Wagner. Yeah, it was Riley Johnson that picked up the foul. The ball stays with the Warriors. Wagner drives, reverse layup. Ooh, little short rebound. And a jump ball will get the show the possession on the ball side. Six turnovers on Wabash Valley here in the second half. Five fifty remaining. 109-46. Riley Johnson dribbles inside the arc. Now dishes it to Brown toward the corner right. Tried to drive the baseline. Cut off. Now it's Robinson. They feed. Riley Johnson. Nice give and go the other way to Kendra Johnson. 13 for Kendra. Give the assist to Riley Johnson. And the foul is going to be a shooting foul. On the other end, 25. That's Riley picking up her fourth foul. So Riley Johnson comes out. Madison Calvin checks in. And at the line will be Isha Williams shooting two. She shoots 68% from the line on the season. Averages 10 per game, has 11. Isha from Elkhart, Indiana. This is the front end. She's a sophomore. Second is good. She got a dozen. 110, 48. Just over five to play. Men will be in action tip off around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Mike Murphy just sat down. We'll have pregame coverage starting about 3.45, or excuse me, 2.45. With Murph, Tim Ritchie on assignment. I don't know what Tim Ritchie assignments are, but he's on assignment. Something to do with grandkids, should have known. Most important. 110-48, Warriors basketball. In the front court, drives across to the elbow, now drives, found an opening. Boy, that was a pretty drive from 
Jade Salters. Salters has four, averages three. Eleven players for the Warriors in the scorebook. Balls missed the shot the other way. On the run, taking it to the length of the floor. Shamira Brown, Shania Brown, rather. That's four in the game for Brown for the Warriors. 114-48. Open three from India Robinson, just short. And it goes out of bounds, but it, officials say it was off of the Warriors. And saying it was off of Shania Brown. And we have a t media timeout with 418 remaining. 114.48, we'll be back in 60 here on 103.5 ESPN.com. Hi guys, TJ Cowan from Cold-Blooded. Coming to you, wanted to introduce the Cold-Blooded Single Barrel Smokehouse. Here at Johnny Logan College, you guys are used to our coffee. Now come check out our food. Not your average college, not your average food. Welcome to Mackey's. How can I help you? Hey, welcome to Mackey's Pizza. Uh, every Monday night we have half price cheese, bre uh, cheese breadsticks. Uh, Monday through Friday we have a great lunch special. We can get eight inch pizza, a, a small salad, and a drink for $7.49. So come out and see us and uh, enjoy everything at Mackey's. <laughs> 418 remaining here in this contest 11448 the number 14 team in the country the Wabash Valley Lady Warriors have the lead balls turn it over and taking it the other way nice drive to the rim is Shania Brown six for Shania here come the Lady Balls Dishes to the corner. Head fake by Kendra Johnson. Johnson drives, gets the bucket in the foul. And so Kendra now. A chance for the and one. Foul was on Karen Brunson. That's the first on Brunson. And so now at the line, Kendra Johnson. She's two for two from the strike. Hits the and one. Fifteen for Kendra, and then Trinity Harris scores the other way. She's in to double digits with 11. 118-51. Open three, right corner. Air ball the other way. Warriors the basketball. Outlet pass to Shania Brown. Gains control. Dishes it to Brunson. Brunson turns it over. India Robinson has it for the Lady Vols. Off the glass, no good. Trotter the rebound way off on her putback, but Indy Robinson dishes it to the corner right. Kendra Johnson's three is good. 18 for Kendra, average is seven a game. And the shot on the other end from Jordan Shannon's no good. And the ball out of bounds will stay with the Lady Warriors. Three minutes remaining. Jumper, no good. Trotter the rebound for the balls. Shamire Brown, who's played with four fouls here most of the second, the entire second half actually. Feeds Maddie Calvin, Calvin throws it off the bottom of the rim but gets it back. Drives the baseline, kicks it to the corner. Open three is good from Kendra Johnson. 21 in the game for Kendra. One, two, three, four threes from Kendra. A wide open lane. Layup is no good and a foul on Madison Calvin. Just a breakdown defensively by the Volunteers. They've not really had a lot of defensive breakdowns. It's just the turnovers have just been brutal for the Lady Vols. So at the line, the free throw is good for Trinity Harris. 
Trinity shoots 79%. She's one for two. Here's her third free throw in the air. And good. 13 for Trinity. Average is eight. 220 remaining. Vols will be back in action on Wednesday night at Kaskaskia. That's a five o'clock tip. Matt Varney will have the call for you. The feed. Shamir Brown gets it. Trotter drives, puts it up. No good. Battles for the rebound. And it's Jordan Shannon with the rebound. Bounce pass the other way. The layup is good from Shania Brown. Eight in the game for Shania. Here's Shamira Brown. Feeds India Robinson. She drives, gets the layup with the right hand and good from India Robinson. 12. And a little John and is Cheyenne Trotter and one of the Warrior players. Frustration. Cheyenne Trotter's played hard. Coaching staff gets in, gets him broke up. Luke Scheidecker comes to the side, gets his players. So we've got all sorts of So we'll see what the officials do, if anything. And it looks like one of, possibly one of the fans may be ejected. It came out, was over on the far sideline. The pushing and the shoving was over on the far side of the floor. And I think they stepped in just to kind of break it up, but continue to have conversations back and forth. So, didn't see what started the confrontation, but it was between Cheyenne Trotter So we have a timeout here on the floor. Men are going to be in action coming up here in about 20 minutes as they take on Wabash Valley. John A. Logan, the number six team in the country. Number seven is Indian Hills. Number eight is Moberly area. And then number nine in the country is Vincennes. That'll be a 3 o'clock tip. So the officials bring Amanda Shelby to the scorer's desk. Scheidecker is at the scorer's desk. Officials are talking. So 122, 59 is the score. As way of an extended timeout here on the floor, officials are still talking with Amanda Shelby. Technical. So Cheyenne Trotter picks up a technical foul and then a dead ball technical foul. And so Cheyenne Trotter now has been ejected. So she's ejected at the 142 mark of the fourth. She leaves with two points in the game. 
And so Cheyenne Trotter leaves the floor. <laughs> and so going out to shoot, the technicals will be Jordan Shannon. Shannon shoots 76%. She'll be shooting two, hits the first. So this is the first technical on Cheyenne Trotter. Jordan Shannon misses the second. And it'll be Wabash ball with a minute 42 remaining. We will not have post-game show. We'll wrap this up as soon as this game ticks off. Mike Murphy will jump in the chair, get you set for men's basketball. You'll have to flip on your radio to 103.5 ESPN. And tune in Mr. Murphy. 123.59 is the score. And a three from the right corner is good from Cheyenne Brown. That's her first three-pointer. She's into double digits with a minute 20 remaining here in this contest. Over to the right corner. Three in and out. No good. Rebound Warriors. As Kendra Johnson misses the three. Dish down low, the other way is good from Cheyenne, Shania Brown. 13 for Shania. Shamira Brown for the Volunteers with 55 to play. Here at the hash, right in front of us. Playing her tight defensively, Jake Salters. And it is Johnson that gets fouled on the shot. So Kendra will shoot free throws. The foul is on Jordan Shannon. Number three on Jordan. And Kendra misses the first. Second is in the air and good. So with 40 seconds remaining, dish down low, and the turnaround and kiss off the glass is good from Shania Brown. 15 for Brown. 33 seconds remaining. India Robinson dribbles it around up top. Reverses, dishes it to the corner right. Maddie Calvin's three is good. 13 for Madison Calvin. 16, 15. Over to the corner right. Warriors are going to pull it up. They're going to pass around with 10 seconds left. And that should do it here this afternoon. 130 to 63. The Warriors get the win over the Lady Balls. Balls were led by the 22 from Kendra Johnson, 13 for Madison Calvin, and the 12 from India Robinson. Also in the scorebook today, uh, Shamira Brown with two, Cheyenne Trotter with two, Olivia Hartman with two, and Riley Johnson with 10. 130-60, the final score. Falls will be back in action Wednesday night, 5 o'clock at Kaskaskia. That'll do our post-game show. Stay tuned and switch over to 103.5 ESPN. Mike Murphy has the men's game. It's coming up here at the top of the hour. Pre-game starting in just moments. Thank you for watching. John A. Logan Women's Basketball here, courtesy of LeBlanc Production Group and on 1035ESPN.com. Have a great night, everyone.